Good evening. I'm Jean McFarland from the Wallingford Community Women, and together with Government Media, we are hosting this evening's taping of the Board of Education candidates' statements. There are several new candidates running for Board of Education. It was a unanimous decision by all candidates that a prepared statement would best allow them to relay the reasons they are running for the Board of Education. Each candidate has a maximum of four minutes to present their case as to why you should consider voting for them on November 2nd. They will provide you with information regarding their qualifications and the issues they consider key to the success of our children and grandchildren here in Wallingford. The order of candidates is alphabetical with no party consideration. One candidate could not appear tonight and I will read his statement. Good evening. I want to thank the Wallingford Community Women for allowing the Board of Ed candidates the opportunity to make a four minute statement in lieu of the traditional form format. And thank you for taking time to listen and educate yourself on the candidates to make an informed decision when you vote. I've been married for 51 years and raised five wonderful kids who attended Wallingford schools and I have five grandchildren, two of whom at attend E.C. Stevens School. I have a bachelor's degree in education from SCSC and I worked at Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield for 27 years where I developed a skill set that transfers nicely to serving on the board. I learned how to really listen to others, to be detail oriented, and how to work with just about anyone. I've served on this board for 14 consecutive years and serve on several subcommittees where we get the work done. As you are aware, there will be at least four brand new members. While new voices are essential, it also helps to have a few folks with history on the board. I'm hoping to retain my seat as one of the experienced voices and someone who, before my decisions can be finalized, listens to the perspectives of all board members, parents, administrators, and teachers. Our life experiences are all different and can offer insights one might not otherwise think of. Only with listening to other perspectives and concerns can a board be truly effective and ensure our decisions are considering all aspects of what is best for all students and staff. Since our statement time is limited, I have chosen to speak about the issue of one high school versus two. I don't have a final opinion yet. After receiving the results of fitting one school at Lyman Hall, I met with the director of facilities at the proposed location and have to say, I was not thrilled. We had a great conversation which made me realize there is a lot more I need to know before making this decision. I would like to see a committee formed to do a deeper dive into both proposals. I want some volunteers on that committee researching the academic and social and emotional impacts of one school instead of two. I want other volunteers with construction experience to ask the right questions and do that deeper dive. If we choose two schools, what are the physical constraints of working within the current footprint of each school? How green can we make them? Will we be limited in HVAC, electrical and plumbing efficiencies because of the physical constraints? How disruptive will learning be while under construction? What are the shortcomings of building one new structure on the Lyman Hall property? What is the impact to the surrounding neighborhood, if any? I want to see an actual scale model of what this building will look like. I hope I have conveyed to you that I don't make quick, quick judgments, especially of this magnitude. I try to do my homework and then listen to others. I'm not the expert on pretty much anything, but I do know how to make decisions. Some are more gut-wrenching than others. There is much more I wish I could share with you, such as our awesome budget process, our need for improving diversity in our staff so students can experience learning from someone who shares similar culture and skin color. Continuing to enhance our multiple pathways to student success, not just college, and ensuring the best educational opportunities for special needs students are realized. To be an effective board member, you need to appreciate and respect the educational experts, most especially the classroom teachers. They are our boots on the ground experts who know what works and more importantly, what does not work in the classroom. I have served with a host of individuals on this board over the past 14 years who brought their distinct personalities and perspectives to the table and I am grateful to have learned from them and hopefully they have learned a bit from me. 
Shortly, you will hear from several new candidates, each bringing their own unique skill sets and talents. I have worked closely with Jacqueline, Maureen, and Mike Urban for the past several months and have gained a great deal of respect for the perspectives they will bring to the board if elected. Please make your, mark your calendars. Vote November 2nd. And I hope I have earned your vote. Your vote matters. Thank you. Thank you to the Wallingford community women for making tonight's event possible. I am running for Board of Education because I want to bring a student perspective to the board. I started my time in the school district when I was in preschool and graduated from Sheehan in 2018. I am now studying at Quinnipiac University where I am pursuing a double major in economics and public relations with a minor in data science. I have experience presenting student concerns as I served for two years as Sheehan's student council president and student representative to the Board of Education. I also served for one year on a statewide student council that worked with the State Department of Education and State Board of Education. My experience is not one-sided as I have also served on several district committees, including diversity, equity, and inclusion, STEM, health and wellness, and curriculum. This is my second time running for Board of Education. I also ran in 2019. I am a lifelong resident of Wallingford and an active member of the community, which gives me a broad perspective of our needs and values as a town. I am a board member at the Rock Church, where I oversee our weekly food giveaways. I am a board member at the United Way, where I participate in the annual allocation of grant money and I have served on a steering committee for community conversations on race that fostered dialogue between community members and community leaders. I am a board member at the YMCA, where I previously led a family game night and a back-to-school supply drive. I am also an active volunteer with the Jubilee 350 celebrations. These experiences have taught me how to work with people of diverse opinions to find the best outcome for all while operating with the utmost transparency. If elected, I will work tirelessly to maintain positive relationships with all community members, our parents, teachers, town residents, and most importantly, students, to keep us united in a vision that focuses on ensuring an equitable and inclusive environment for all and finding the best use of school facilities and taxpayer dollars to foster student learning and prepare all students, starting with our youngest learners, for the future. I invite all members of the Wallingford community to reach out to me at any time via email at deeringforboard at gmail.com, on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram, Deering for Board, or by calling or texting 203-208-8534. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jacqueline McFarlane. I'm a mother of two children who currently attend elementary schools here in Wallingford. By day, I'm a banking analyst for Transact Campus, where I've been working for the last seven and a half years. My work experience includes over 10 years of management and leadership experience, and I have a broad and unique skill set that I believe will be an asset to the Board of Education. Our children deserve the best education that we can give them. The physical state of our facilities is currently lacking. We need to conduct the studies necessary to gather the data needed to finalize a plan of action. The decision of one high school or two is not one that can be made without first analyzing the necessary data, including the new state reimbursement regulations. We must balance the need for updating these facilities with maintaining fiscal responsibility. I understand taxpayers' concerns and believe that we must maintain transparency throughout this process. Our taxes should be treated as an investment in our children's future. At the core of that investment should be our education system. Wallingford's population is in decline, 
especially our young adult and young family populations. The key to drawing families back to Wallingford is through a strong education system where our children thrive in a safe learning environment and are prepared for the future. We have wonderful career pathing options for our high school students that include advanced manufacturing, CNA certification, and the culinary arts. Our world is ever changing though. I think we can do even better by offering paths into green technologies and creative economics. Green technologies are the future. Creative economics encompasses advertising, agriculture, film, music, publishing, games, performing arts, and research and development. According to a 2011 study by Americans for the Arts, this ever-growing part of our economy generates over $135 billion in annual economic activity through nonprofits alone. The more paths our students are given to explore, the more assurance we have that they will find a successful path into society. As we work towards diversifying career pathing, we should also strive to diversify our staff so that we better represent the demographics of our student population. All of our children should be able to see a reflection of themselves in their teachers. And no, I'm not only referring to race. Every portion of our population should feel represented and heard. We must build a culture that focuses on inclusivity and equity for everyone. I have been door knocking along with my fellow Democratic candidates for the last nine months. We have been listening to the needs and concerns of our teachers, our students, and you, their parents. Should I be elected to the Board of Education, I will continue to listen and lead with compassion. I urge all residents of Wallingford to come out and vote on November 2nd. Your vote and your voice matter. And we can't move towards the future without your participation. I hope you will vote for me, Jacqueline McFarlane, along the, with the rest of the Democratic slate. Thank you. My name is Jen Passaretti, and I'm running for the Wallingford Board of Education. I have been a proud Wallingford resident for 20 years, and during that time, my focus has been on raising three children to be self-sufficient and independent. Our youngest started college this fall, and so I'm ready to now commit my talent and efforts to the future of Wallingford students. A town's value is determined by the quality of its schools, and I want to be part of keeping Wallingford schools successful and competitive. I love our town, and I love serving our town. I sit right here in Town Hall once a month in the Inland Wetlands Commission, and I'm also a member of the Wallingford Community Theater. I've been in higher education for 18 years at the University of New Haven, and I'm teaching the freshman biology course. I have a front row seat to their transition into higher education. I see the products of the education system from the other side, and I bring a unique perspective to help our students succeed post high school. I know what a successful freshman looks like, and I know that the ones who struggle either aren't fully prepared for college or a four-year college isn't a good fit for them. I am less concerned about our college acceptance rates, and I'm more interested in learning about those same students and if they're thriving one year post high school. As a community, we need to eliminate the negative stigma of a young person not choosing a four-year college. As a member of the Board of Education, I will support all post-secondary paths, including community college, the military, vocational training, and even entering directly into the workforce. Now let's talk about our students post-COVID, and specifically its impact on our children's mental health, which affects their engagement in school with potential long-term consequences. We don't really know how far-reaching these effects will be. Children that seem fine now might show signs of distress after pandemic recovery. So I am committed to supporting policies that are focused on our students' mental, emotional, and social health. Now, another issue in the minds of the people of Wallingford is combining two high schools, and I am not convinced 
that one high school is what's best for our children. I am committed to keeping an open mind as we do a, do, as we do a deep dive investigation. In the interim, I would like to see improvements to the infrastructure to our schools and more energy efficient capital projects like retrofitting our light fixtures with LED lights and light occupancy sensors. I anticipate some tough choices in the next two years, especially when it comes to the budget. Our education budget is nearly $107 million. That's two thirds of our town's overall budget. I understand the balance between providing stakeholders with necessary resources while also maintaining fiscal responsibility. I have prior experience as the treasurer of my church, so I know how to be a good steward of a community's hard earned money. I will be guided by what's best for our children, our community, and our future. I have the tools to enhance our school system, but I can't do it from the outside. I can only do it from the inside, and that is why I need to be elected to the Board of Education. I can be reached by phone. My phone number is 203-679-1882, or you can email me at jenpasaretti for boe at gmail.com. That's Jen, P-A-S-S-A-R-E-T-T-I, the number four, boe at gmail.com. Let your voice be heard and be sure to vote November 2nd. Thank you. Hello. First of all, I want to thank Jean McFarlane for organizing this event and her flexibility during COVID. My name is Tammy Raccio and I am running for re-election to the Board of Education. As a Board of Ed member, I recognize one of the most pressing issues in our schools post-COVID is the mental health of our students. The interrelated areas of mental health include three social-emotional factors. They are social, or how students relate to each other, emotional, how they feel, and behavioral, how they act. If re-elected as a Board of Ed member, I will support administration as they lead our district to a new normal after the pandemic, including supporting the social emotional needs of our students. This does not mean we need new initiatives. Rather, our students and staff need to feel supported to accelerate learning, maintain physical health, and establish social emotional connections. As we prioritize which highly effective practices to advance, we are fortunate to already be a pilot district for the statewide DESA tool. This social emotional learning assessment will provide staff with the data needed to ensure students receive the social emotional learning and support needed. Focusing on students' mental health, including their social emotional proficiencies is critical for their success in school and beyond. On a budgetary front, education has received an unprecedented amount of non-recurring grant funds during this pandemic. As the only certified public accountant running for office, I have experience working with grants and the ability to interpret requirements while maximizing grant funding. As a Board of Ed member, I will work with leadership to explore every opportunity to strategically utilize funding in a manner that will be sustainable. Through increased professional development and focusing on highly research-based practices, those working with our students will be better prepared to make the decisions necessary in a post-pandemic environment. As a Board of Ed member, I will make educationally sound decisions with fiscal responsibility and equity for all students. I will support the Board of Ed to educate community decision makers around the needs of our aging schools. Our school buildings need attention. More attention than chipping away at a list of isolated projects on our strategic plan. We need to invest in our schools beyond the awarded annual budget for non-bondable expenses. 
during my current term, my educational experiences have further developed my passion to ensure equitable educational opportunities for all students, including those at the most risk or in underrepresented classes. My involvement in education has extended beyond the Wallingford Board of Ed. And during this term, I've also served on the Bureau of Special Education Special Advisory Council, where I'm currently the chairperson, the Accelerate CT Task Force, the State Department of Ed Transition Task Force, including the Steering Committee, the CT SEDS Vendor Committee for the new statewide IEP, and the Expulsion and Suspension Committee established by a public act earlier this year. These experiences have given me appreciation for the challenges in education from many perspectives. If reelected, every decision I make on the board will be student focused and made with equitable distribution of resources. Thank you. Hello. I'm Maureen Reed. As a candidate for the Board of Education, my plan is to listen to the comments and concerns of all constituents, students, teachers, parents, and the community, and work with the Central Office Administration to address those concerns. My credentials to serve as a Board of Education member include being an educator for over 25 years, graduating from the Wallingford School System, and being a parent of four children who attended Wallingford Schools. You can find more information on my credentials and platform on the Wallingford DTC website. I've been listening to students, parents, and teachers regarding the impact of COVID protocols, and I hear their concerns about safety and mental health. The mask mandate has been discussed at length. Wearing masks is a mandate put into place by the governor. We are required to follow that mandate, and at this time, given the continuous presence of COVID in the community, we want to keep our children safe. I would like to put more energy into discussing the mental health of our children. School has been in session for almost two months, and it is evident that many of our students are working hard to reacclimate to school expectations. It is very important that we use the support services we have, school counselors, school psychologists, social workers, and teachers to help support our struggling learners. After the last year and a half, it is still difficult to just return to normal. Recognizing this, being empathetic, and providing strategies for our children to work through this cannot be stressed enough. Another concern of parents and students is the condition of our school facilities. We need to move to make a decision on the best path forward and put it into place. The possibility of one high school and or updating all of the schools has been analyzed for a few years. Let's look at every piece of research we've done, work with the town council, the mayor, and the state to complete our process and move forward to improve the facilities for our children. I have heard the community's concerns regarding our standardized test scores in comparison to other school districts in the DERG and the state as a whole. My belief is that standardized test scores are just one piece of assessing the success of our children. I would like to work with central office educators to review this area. If our curriculum, instruction, and assessments are aligned to standards, it should follow that our standardized test scores would demonstrate success. At the same time, we need to keep in mind that the social and emotional well-being of our students is equally important in preparing our children upon graduation. Today's children will be in charge of our town, state, and country someday. Let's take the time to teach them how to coexist with everyone, respecting all races, nationalities, religions, and belief systems. We need to continue to support the diversity of our students through curriculum and instructional practices. Let's make sure we teach the next generation to reinforce civility toward one another and to adopt the necessary skills to successfully enter the workforce no matter the path that they take to get there. Which brings me to the last point I strongly support. We must prepare our students and encourage them to seek out all opportunities and pathways post-graduation. We need to continue to collaborate with community colleges, four-year universities, and local businesses to develop the connections and networking for our children. I look forward to having your support on November 2nd 
and working with our slate of six BOE candidates. And I want to thank you for giving us this opportunity to share our thoughts. Good evening, my name is Donna Regan, and thank you to the Wallingford Community Women for providing me the opportunity to speak this evening. I lived in Wallingford for over 20 years with my husband, and I've educated three children in the public Wallingford public school system. I work for a large insurance company in Hartford as a marketing partner, supporting their InsureTech initiative, and I have over 20 years of experience in technology marketing. I've been active in scouting for 15 years and an active member of St. Paul's Episcopal Church, where I've held a variety of positions, the most recent including being the chair of a capital campaign that successfully reached a pretty lofty goal for pledges during a pandemic and all done virtually. I've traveled to Nicaragua twice to participate in a clean water program through El Porvenir. I serve on the board of a family-run foundation dedicated to serving the needs of our service veterans. Volunteering is in my nature. Each Board of Ed candidate tonight has their own reason for running. Personally, now that my children are no longer in the system, I feel I can give back to the school system that educated my children. I have over 15 years of experience in our schools. I was active in the PTO, volunteered at the school events, and helped in the classrooms. I also have experience with 504 plans, IEPs, and PPTs. I have worked tirelessly to be an advocate for my children to allow them to learn in their own unique ways. I have seen firsthand the struggles and the successes of students through the eyes of my children. And I want to use that experience to enhance our special services and help parents navigate through that process. There's a lot of discussions out there right now about masks and vaccinations. Are they important issues? Yes, they are. Should the board be listening? Yes, they should. And while I absolutely believe that parents and teachers should have the right to choose when it comes to those issues, I want to focus on the issues that the board can control. The board has the responsibility of a massive budget. It's two-thirds of the entire town budget. That's a big responsibility to manage. We need to balance being fiscally responsible with being good stewards to our school system. I'd like to look at how to improve test scores and how to address bullying. And after a difficult year with a lot of uncertainty, what can we do to promote emotional health for our students and staff? How do we explore technology and opportunities to learn are we providing a quality educational opportunity to students who choose not to attend a college or university? That's a lot of different topics and I certainly don't expect to solve all of them, but I look forward to participating in the conversations around them. There's also the elephant in the room, the consolidation of schools. And I honestly cannot speak to whether or not I would endorse a single school or continue with our current two school system. But I'm open to hearing what the data tells us. It's a passionate issue here in Wallingford, but it needs to be a conversation and not an argument. I will absolutely stand up for what I feel is right based on the data, and in the end, I would support what would be financially best for our schools in town. Being a part of the Board of Education does not give me a platform to pursue my own agenda. It is an opportunity to be part of a team. Our goal should be to enhance the learning opportunities for all students in Wallingford, listen to the concerns of the parents, and work with the teachers and staff. I thank you for your time this evening, and I appreciate your vote on November 2nd. Good evening, everyone. Unfortunately, I am unable to attend tonight's forum, and Jean McFarland has been kind enough to read my statement. My name is Pat Reynolds, and I've been a lifelong resident of Wallingford. I've been married for 48 years. I have three children and six grandchildren, of which two are currently in the Wallingford school system. 
First, I would like to thank the Wallingford community women for organizing this event and for giving the candidates the opportunity to speak. Second, why am I running for Board of Ed? I was raised in a family where my siblings and I were taught to be grateful to live in a community such as Wallingford and were expected to contribute or give back to our community. I decided to become involved in education. I have taught high school science for over 20 years and college science for over 35 years. I also decided to become involved in local governing, having served nearly 10 years as a member of the Board of Education. Third, what will I do if re-elected? There are a number of issues that I would like to focus on. First is the budget. Maintain a transparent and effective budget that will address both educational goals and taxpayer concerns. Second, new initiatives. We need to continue to focus on initiatives that will directly contribute to the success of our students. Also, new initiatives should have a metric that evaluates its success and effectiveness and its impact on student success and taxpayer cost. Third, career pathways. We need to encourage students to engage in diverse post-graduation career paths, such as advanced manufacturing, CNA certification, energy management, and culinary arts. Fourth, the school renovation plan. Create a timeline for the renovation of our schools. Acknowledge the need for improved facilities and finalize comprehensive plans for investing in our school buildings with the town council as mandated by the new state reimbursement regulations. We need to ensure that energy efficiency and green technologies are included in any renovation plan. Fifth, transparency. Continue to be transparent to all the stakeholders, parents, staff, students, and Wallingford residents. Sixth, continue to the effort to encourage accountability and work ethic in our children so that they will be able to meet the demands and challenges of life after public school. Seventh, empower special needs students to successfully transition to post high school opportunities. Eighth, expand tactics for recruitment of diverse staff to match the demographics of our student population. Once again, I would like to thank the Wallingford community women for making tonight possible. I would also like to encourage all of you to become active members of the Wallingford community and especially to those who are eligible to vote. Please exercise this right on November 2nd. Thank you and have a good night. Hi, I'm Marla Roscoe, and I'm running for the Board of Education here in Wallingford. I'm excited to help you learn a little bit more about me. I am a doctor of physical therapy, where I regularly, regularly collaborate with a multidisciplinary team for the benefit of my patients. I am a former educator at my alma mater, Quinnipiac University. I am a staunch believer in community service where I have served as a figurehead, keynote speaker, and advocate for several nonprofit organizations. And as Miss Connecticut 2003, I really was able to hone in my leadership and collaborative skills. I am also a health and wellness consultant, a wife and mom to my two little boys, Finley who is five and Dexter who is three. Honestly, I never saw myself running for a political office, and it wasn't until about two and a half, three years ago, when formal education became a real topic in our household, that I decided to take a deep dive into what it means to be on the Board of Education and if this is for me. I realized that I'm passionate about education and the manner in which it is delivered to my children. So here I am, raising my hand in the midst of a global pandemic, trying something brand new that is a little bit intimidating at times. This journey so far has showed me that advocating for my children and the children of Wallingford is absolutely worth it. In talking with people, I realized there's a couple topics that continue to come up. The first one, one school versus two. In my heart, 
I love the comfort and the idea of two schools. However, I look forward to being able to sit on the Board of Education and see the proposals and the facts that are going to allow me to look at the real pros and cons and decide what is best for our community, of course, our students, and what makes the most fiscal responsible choice. COVID fatigue is another thing that continues to come up. It is no doubt that this global pandemic has really taken a toll on people, specifically our teachers and our students. I know that the town of Wallingford has really put some things into place to be able to bridge the gaps that have happened during this pandemic. However, I look forward to continuing to narrow those gaps through promoting better education in terms of their academic growth, social growth, and also emotional growth. For I know that when people are happy and healthy, that is when they can deliver and receive the best education possible. I believe so strongly in a total collective education. That of course is serving the mind and growing the mind through our core curriculum, but also learning how to take care of the body. And that includes that social emotional component. It is imperative that we are graduating young adults who are able to stand on their own two feet and take on the world in the best way possible. In my home, we value a deep love of learning. My children often learn this through example, seeing me attend multiple continuing education courses. And I love that they ask me, mom, what did you learn today? The same question I ask them when they come home from school every day. I know that to instill a deep love of learning, we need to have high quality, exciting education in class because there is no replacement for in-classroom learning. Like I said, I never saw myself sitting in this position, but I am here raising my hand as a mom who is willing to use her voice for the students of Wallingford. So I ask you, if you would, please vote Marla Roscoe for the Board of Education on, Wall on Election Day and allow me to be an advocate for your children. Thank you so much for your time. Good evening. I wish to thank the Wallingford community women for this opportunity to share with you why I feel I am deserving of your vote this November. Over the past four years, I have worked hard to improve and an up-to-date and safe learning environment for our students. I have found it very gratifying that I have earned the trust, support, and confidence of our parents, faculty, and students, and I hope to continue to act as an advocate for them going forward. Over the next two years, the members of the Board of Education will be called upon to make several key decisions that will have a, a lasting effect on how education is delivered in Wallingford. I support the continuation of two high schools. The, the one high school proposal gambles that the downward trend of Wallingford school age population will continue to decline in the foreseeable future. Any change in this would potentially lead to a system without the capacity to handle any population growth. This happened when we closed Parker Farms and Yalesville schools several years ago because of declining enrollment only to have to reopen them later at no small expense. Our current schools require the improvement and modernizations that will finally bring them into the 20th century. Our oldest school is Moses Beach School, which was opened in 1950, and our newest is Yalesville School, which was, had additions in 1985. This includes seeing that air conditioning is put in place where possible. Given the changing climate, this may happen sooner later rather than later. The, the, the athletic facilities at Sheehan are in desperate need of replacement after years of use by the schools, parks and rec, and many youth sport leagues. It's time to make these necessary improvements. We have a softball field at Lyman Hall High School that becomes Lake Lyman Hall every time it rains. We must take the necessary steps to make the Wallingsford school system more attractive to young families. Despite our challenges, we must improve upon our test scores in the basic three R's. Consistent with the nation as a whole, the diversity of Wallingford students continues to broaden. 
There are 24 different languages spoken in the homes of our students other than English. Unfortunately, the diversity of our teachers does not match that of our students. I support creating and aggressively recruiting a more diverse teaching population that will reflect our students' needs. I support increasing the number of ESL teachers and support staff so that these students will have a real opportunity of achieving the American dream. I am one of five generations of Wallingford residents that have been educated in Wallingford's school system from kindergarten through high school. As a result, I am fully committed to ensuring that our school system has the resources necessary to provide our kids with a safe, supported, and well-functioning learning environment. I ask for your permission to continue to serve as a member of your Board of Education for the next two years. Respectfully yours, I am Ray Ross. Hi, I'm Michael Urban, and I am running for the Board of Education. To give you a little background about myself and why I'm running, first off, I'm dedicated to really passionate about our, really our students, our teachers, and our educators. We need to really drive up our scores here in town and reinvest in our schools. We have to reinvest in our teachers and really put our students on the right path for the future here in our country and around the globe. A little bit about me, I, my background, I'm an occupational therapist. I've advocated for students who could not get services for special needs. Um, I've volunteered my time to do that and advocated for those students. My background, I have a doctorate in occupational therapy. I also have a bachelor's in science and master's in science in occupational therapy. I also have my business degree. And that business degree has allowed me to learn a lot of skills for finance management, which a lot of times people don't think of that for boards. They think of more curriculum. But at the same time, you think about what do people need? What do we have to look at? And we look at our schools where the buildings are falling apart, we have to think about where's that money going? We look at the scores that were issued just recently by the Department of Education. Wallingford scored has dropped and we're spending more than West Haven, Danbury, and our neighboring schools. So we think about that, where's that money going? So for the past 20 years, I've worked as an occupational therapist I currently work at the University of New Haven, where I've set up two master's programs and, I work, uh, and also working up with a doctorate program that I'm overseeing. So I understand curriculum, I understand meeting standards, and I understand meeting those needs. But at the same time, my background working in the federal health care system, I was able to take a $2 million deficit in the last quarter and cut that down to $100,000. After that, I was able to grow services while also maintaining my budget or staying on budget. And those skills, that quality management background that I'm looking at is what I'm looking to bring and working across the entire board, the people who will be sitting on either side of me here, regardless of what party they belong to, to make sure that we are advocating for our teachers, our students, and ultimately our taxpayers. They are our stakeholders also. I did this in the federal system, I will do it here at the local system. So when you think about my budgeting background, I also have a strong leadership background. I currently sit with the International Organization for the American Occupational Therapy Association, where I'm actually working with the, the association on structural regovernance. So I can understand looking at the complexities there. At the same time, I have also led, I was a past state president for the Connecticut OT Association, where I advocated not only for um, patients and the profession, but I also helped and made sure that laws and rules were being enforced. Our, ther our therapy cap of $35, I made sure that was enforced. So as you think about those skills and why does that come to a board, you have to think about where we're looking at, okay? We have to think about how many people are going forward and advocating for teachers, advocating for the students, making sure the schools meet their needs. Walking into a school and seeing a school where the air conditioning is running but the room is hot, how can a kid learn? So we really have to get out there and vote. You have to vote and get the right people at the board to ask those right questions and to make sure that we are advocating for the right um, opportunities to go forward. And with that, I would like to encourage you to come out and vote for me again on November 2nd, so I can be a voice for all the people, regardless of your affiliation, your party, and working with the slate that I've been working with since February to make sure we can change and advocate for the future of our, of our students. Thank you.
Good evening. I would like to thank the Wallingford Community Woman for sponsoring this opportunity that allows the candidates a chance to share why they would be a worthy member of the Board of Education. My name is Michael Votto and have been a resident of Wallingford for 49 years. My wife Ann and I have raised our three children in Wallingford. My daughter Ariana is a teacher in, Bramford, in the Bramford school system and my son Michael is an assistant principal in Massachusetts. Our youngest daughter Gina works with the agency Abilities Without Boundaries. Three of my five grandchildren, triplets, are presently sophomores at Sheehan High School. I am an educator who has taught in the North Brantford school system for 36 years at the middle school level. Upon retiring from North Brantford, I became principal of St. Aidan St. Brendan School in New Haven for nine and a half years. After a short year and a half of retirement, I am presently the principal of Our Lady of Mercy Preparatory Academy in Madison. I have been a Board of Education member since 1999, except for one term, and therefore am the longest serving member of the board. I feel my experience in the classroom and as an administrator allows me to bring to the table many years of experience in the field of education. During my tenure on the board, I have been involved in a myriad of tasks that have given me the experience and expertise needed to be an active and knowledgeable participant. I have served in all leadership positions on the board, including chairperson for two years, vice chairperson for one year, and secretary for three terms. I have assisted in developing the process of hiring superintendents, actively participate in interviewing all potential new administrators, served on various committees over the last 20 years, such as the 11 school renovation project, Wintergreen Magnet School Representative, Stipend Committee, Policy Committee, Calendar Committee, the Wallingford Representative and the ACES Governing Board, Board of Education Representative on Hubcap, and I am one of the board members who negotiates with all nine unions associated with the Board of Education. My primary focus in, be in being a Board of Education member has always been students first. I am a firm believer that all children can experience success with the proper tools such as excellent teachers, current curriculum, and a safe environment. Additionally, I need to mention that I've always made an effort to be an advocate of children with special needs and their families. As a parent of a special needs adult, I have firsthand experience with this special population and they will always have a place in my heart. If I am elected to another term, I will make a concerted effort to monitor math and reading scores in each of our schools. This is an area which the board has addressed with dollars and personnel and accountability must prevail. Additionally, I will make every effort to listen to the concerns of parents and attempt to make decisions based on the merits of those concerns. I am asking for your support on election day so that I may continue to serve the children of Wallingford with my many years as an educator and as a Board of Education member. The profession I chose and started nearly 50 years ago has been most rewarding. I love to be able to use my experience in education in a different role outside of the classroom to be an asset to all the children of Wallingford. Thank you for your time. The Wallingford Community Women and Government Media thank you for watching and listening to what the candidates have to say about the educational future of the children of Wallingford. Please vote on November 2nd.